what's your favorite way to create the psychedelic effect? Well, you use, uh, you use opaque projectors to create these liquid uh, dyes. You take these liquid dyes, if you have different densities of liquids, like oil and other things, you mix them in these petri dishes, and you'd actually use... But we, we established this one in different directions of that. We use slide projection, we use movie projection equipment, and a few of our my associates who like... Um, one of them was Chip Roser. He actually uh, created later the movie Inner Space. It was a sci-fi classic. Uh, Bob Lewis, who ran a video-visual company. Uh, now, is, area is area there a show that comes to mind where you got the lights, the light show fit the music just right? You finished and said, we nailed it. That was perfect. Well, actually, you know, the funny thing about it was, it was all experimentation. I mean, there were some artists like Frank Zappa who would bring a whole plan of how this show was going to go minute by minute and you'd have to work things out. Other times we'd rehearse things when the tea party was closed, we'd actually figure out lighting design, what they were going to do and what their music was going to be. You have to be familiar with the music as well. So you'd have to actually know the performers who are going to be there. Try to, If you didn't know the performers, at least get an idea of how they sound and try to work the visual effects around their sound. And that was always a challenge, but it was always fun. So, so just like the musicians each night, you were basically improv improvising each night yourself. Oh yeah, you had to improvise. But it was like not just wasn't just me. It was a team of usually four or five people. And I worked with the other. There were two light shows at the Tea Party primarily. One was the Forest, and the other was the Road. The Road is where I started working on for a while. Steve Nelson got me involved in that, and then I continued on working off and on doing that through everything else that went on there. And I. We'd experiment back and forth, and they left, and we'd do some stuff, and vice versa, but we'd always collaborate, and it was a lot of fun. But it was a lot of improvisation. You have to, Every week, you'd have to try to rehearse, try to figure out some new visual ideas, and try to mix things together and see if you can balance them all out visually, because the, the screens were as big as this whole room. You know, they'd yeah. be 30 feet high background, especially in the Lansdowne Street Bridge. As, as well as the Tea Party, you'd be completely surrounded by the visuals. Did, did you know at the time that this was some, going to be something special and unique? Did, did you get a sense it was a special time? Well, it was definitely a special time. Uh, I don't think any of us really envisioned what it would become as the years progressed. I mean, I've kept in music all my life, working in the background of it, because that's what I do now, and I've had the opportunity to do that. But the fact is, nobody really had the vision, but it's now obviously a major uh, change in culture. Um, we've learned a lot from it. Uh, looking back at it now, I'm looking through the slides I shot in those period of time right now to see how that all came together. And I'm putting that together where Steve's site is being built. Um, a lot of the pictures will probably start surfacing in the next few months. So, What do you think it means for the Tea Party to be commemorated today like it has been by the Historical Society? I think it's an amazing thing. I think it's great because basically we're all part of it. We're there most of its existence. And like the film or East and West and the Electric Factory, it was like a major trend-setting thing. It changed the music world.